OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, so good afternoon and welcome everybody to Jamboard Tips and Tricks. I am Cindy Waslowski. You can call me Cindy since my name is a little hard to say. And there's my email. And um, are you ready to learn more about Jamboard? I, I, I hope some of you have heard about it. Maybe some of you have tried it, but um, we're gonna learn more about it. And, and I'm so happy you're joining me today. Uh, although I am retired um, from San Diego Community College District, I still do some training for OTAN here and there. And, um, and just an FYI, most of my teaching experience is with the beginning levels of ESL. So a lot of my examples might have a lower level tilt, but not, not all of them. So um, let's get started. So what is Jamboard? Uh, our first thing on the agenda today, we're gonna look at um, su some suggested uses with students. There's so much you can do with them and it's only a little bit of what I'll be sharing with you. I'm sure you'll have your own ideas and we'll take it from there. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, how to get to Jamboard. There's a few ways you can do that. Some things that I find are helpful to know when working with Jamboard. Uh, let, and I'll do a little demo where you are the student and participate in that way. And then I'll show you some other Jamboards where you as the teacher would be creating uh, some Jamboards. Then I've got some resources for you for video and template resources. Uh, that you could find online. And then a little time for reflection if we have a moment for that, hopefully we will. And so what is Jamboard? This up on my screen, okay. So it actually is a pretty nifty interactive digital whiteboard um, where you can post lots of things like sticky notes, which are really colorful, text boxes, images, and, and more. And it's a free Google app. And so all the Jamboards get stored in your Google Drive, just like your docs and sheets and other things. Um, as with the other Google products, you can share them to edit or to view. So because the Jamboards are interactive, uh, most of the time you'll share those to edit so your students can edit them. And um, I've got links here to pages in the PowerPoint that will show you how to edit or change it to view. But I'll be demoing that later as well. And Jamboard works great remotely or face-to-face. -face. Uh, some of you might be back face-to-face, -face, but you know can still work there as well as online. Um, you know, the students are with you in the hybrid format or just all the time, uh, you know, remotely. There is a web app and that's what I'll be using today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there is a mobile app that uh, you can also download and that works really well on your tablet. Your students might be using their phones. It is very small to use on the phone, uh, but so computers or tablets work best. And like I said before, there are a lot of free templates online um, that you could search for. And I found lots of them and it's a big time saver when you can use those. So what do we do with students? Well, Jamboards are great for warm-up activities, reviewing any kind of content, brainstorming, vocabulary practice, pre-writing, really good for that to get their uh, schema going, uh, getting feedback from them, how they're feeling or how their projects are going, things like that, group work, 
report backs, working with checks, a reading preview, exit tickets, and you as a teacher, maybe you just want to be modeling something. Just a, a small sampling of that. So there are basically about three ways to get to Jamboard. As with other Google products, you put the name of the product before .google.com. So jamboard.google.com works. Uh, you can go to your Google Drive and go to new and then more and then Google Jamboard if you want to open it up that way. Or a real shortcut, a real shortcut is just typing jam.new in your browser. So that's an easy way to do it. Some helpful things to know. Um, there are, yeah, Jamboard is kind of like um, a, a bunch of slides and there are only 20 frames they're called, uh, maximum per Jamboard. So just an FYI on that. Uh, you can make multiple copies of the same frame for group work and that's a good thing because maybe you're on Zoom and you're having your students go to breakout rooms and then you share the jam, the jam board with them and then they each group knows um, which frame they're working on. The background image can be different on each frame and it does interact well with Google Classroom, Google Meet and Canvas, if any of you use those. Uh, there is a way to force a copy feature so that each student gets their own copy to edit. And there's a link here to another slide on this presentation that will show you how to do that. Like I said before, there's a lot of videos and templates out there that are free and we're gonna make sure we notice the undo button because you might have an unexpected deletion or something going on, or we can use the version history. That's a new feature with Jamboard. They've included version history. Version history. Um, you can't right click to copy items frame to frame, but if you use the control or command keys, um, on your keyboard, that is possible. I like to use the shortcut Control plus D to duplicate items in one frame, and we'll practice that. The three dots in the bar that we'll be seeing in the title bar we'll be seeing later is where you're gonna do some um, image um, saving, or you can download as a PDF, the whole Jamboard if you want to. And you can select items, just use the delete key on your keyboard. And, and these are all things you can look at later, but I just wanted to outline a few things. And you can make some more sophisticated backgrounds uh, in Google Slides or in a PowerPoint. And that's how we would do that. So before we go on, let's, uh, I'm gonna reshare my screen and let's look at a jam together. I think it would be this one. Oops, not that one. Sorry. Okay, here we are. I've shared this in the um, chat for you also, and it's a list of all the things that we'll be uh, doing. Oh, Cindy, using sorry. Today. Yes. Are you sharing jump board tips and tricks right now? Um, no, it just opened up to that because that was the last thing I had used. Oh, okay. You, you so, didn't start sharing the new one, right? Right. Okay. Okay. So this is called, this is a, a new jam. And say you went to, um, like I said, jam new. It would open up a brand new jam for you. Um, so I have one ready to go here, but let's uh, you know, let's look at the navigation first, so it's familiar. And actually, in the chat, could anybody say um, yes or no if you used Jamboard before? Yes, good. Okay, 
Okay, so kind of like half and half. Some people have used it before. Now you may have used it as a participant or you may have created some for your classroom. So that could be uh, different. So you're not seeing, can you see this Jamboard on the screen? Somebody said they couldn't see it. No, we can see, uh, sorry, Cindy, we can see the previous presentation, Jamboard tips and, and tricks uh, with agenda, what is Jamboard uh, slides? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So let me do a new share again. Okay, sorry about that. How about this one? Yes, what city would you like to visit? Okay, perfect. All right, so I just want to go through the navigation. So just watch my mouse. So in the top left, of course, uh, that's where you typically uh, name, you know, Google, Google product. So I'm just going to leave it untitled jam right now, but let's add um, practice. So I've renamed it now. And um, then along the side is where you can have most of the items to use on your Jamboard. And if you move your mouse slowly, you, you're gonna see the name of what the item is. The pen, and there are choices. They just get thicker and thicker till you get to the brush. And not too many colors, but you could change the color if you wanted. There's an eraser. There's a pointer and the pointer is kind of the default. If you want to get out of something else, like if you're an eraser and it, you know, you're trying to not erase anymore, uh, it's good to click on the select button. Then we have sticky notes, which are all these colors here. You could even have a transparent one. And we'll be working with those today. There's adding an image. And there are lots of choices now. They've added some more choices. You can upload something, um, go by URL, it even you can use your camera. And oh, okay, so I guess you gotta select it. I don't have it selected right now. You could do a Google image search, you can go through your Google Drive or Google Photos. So lots of choices to add an image. Uh, then there are several shapes, all these different shapes and arrows that you can use. We'll be looking at those as well. Text boxes. And then there is a laser pointer. So as you're looking at a jam, you could Kind of be using that and highlighting something and then it goes away. So that's another option. Now when I select things like for example, let's see like the uh, shapes. If you look up here you'll see some other formatting choices that you have. Again you can change this as the border color and oh, then Cindy, this sorry. Is yeah. Jan Janet is asking if you can show again how to open a new gem board. Yeah, sure. So the easiest way, the shortcut is open your browser. Can you see this? Or do yes. I need it? Okay, yes. good. All right. And then you type jam, which is a shortcut of jam board dot new and it's in the PowerPoint as well. And then it opens up to a brand new jam. Does that answer your question? Janet, hopefully. And um, in the chat, let's see. Um, this is a document I'm sharing right now in the chat and it should list my presentation on it, a link to that, and then all the Jamboards I'm sharing today. Okay, so that's how you get to a new Jam.
So here's the one we were just on. Um, and then let's see, if you go to the text box and you want to insert that, now your choices up here have changed. You can change the size of your font, a few colors. They're kind of in the same palette. Um, and then you can change your alignment. So I just prepared a few slides here and I'd like you to participate. And so if I want my students to participate, um, as with other Google products, you go up to the top right and click the share. And I want to make sure it says edit. So I'm copying the link and I'm just going to share this in the chat just in case you um, want to just go directly to this jam. So go ahead and click on that and come in <clears throat> and then I can see people are coming in because you see uh, all the little icons up here. So good, you made it in there. So in this first jam, it says, what city would you like to visit? So let me model for you first. I'd like you to pick the sticky note on the left. <clears throat> pick a color you like. And then just type uh, a city that you would like to visit. And save it. Then you cancel to get out of it. You can move them around. You can resize them from one of the bottom corners. So go ahead and, ooh, a lot of us are going to Paris, so I think we should go together. Great, look at you. Okay, beautiful. Okay, excellent. So we've got London, New York, lots of London. Okay, now to add, oh, Scotland. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say to add to the fun, let's add a picture of the place you want to go. So if you click add image, you can search in Google. So I'm going to search in Google. Find a picture I like. And insert it. And then you can move it around near, near where um, you posted your place. Excellent. And you notice because we're all collaborating together, you know, I could change someone else's work. So that's, you know, maybe a good thing, maybe a bad thing, but just so you know. Okay, great. We're getting a nice collage here. <laughs> Great. Okay, good. And then anybody can, you know, make things smaller and move them around. Uh, we can clean it up together. You notice when the pictures come in, <clears throat> they often show up in the middle. So then you kind of work from there. All right, how's that going for everybody? <laughs> Now, if you're doing this with your class, you know, you, you want to uh, make sure you're ready for the number of students that you're working with. You might have <clears throat> one or two frames of the same thing, the same question, so that could accommodate more people. Okay, was everybody successful? 
type in the chat, yay or nay. If you... Yes, it was yes. good. Oh, good, good, Alicia. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I recognize your voice. That's All great. Right. Thank you. All right, great. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to the next frame. And I'd like you to move on to the next frame also. So up at the top, where it says one over four, that will show you how many frames we have. And we have four frames. So let's go to the next frame. Do you see the next frame where it says, share an example of a difficult life decision? Yes. Okay, so in this activity, I've numbered a lot of sticky notes, and this is something you might want to do with your students. If they're too low to even work with the sticky notes, you can have them ready, or if you want to save time. So <clears throat> you can just pick a number. I've got 16 up here. Pick a number and um, click on it, delete the number. And then you can write something that you would, you know, an idea of something that would be a difficult life decision. So let's say, here's a good one. You get married or not. Okay. That might be a difficult life decision. So go ahead and select a number and open it up, erase the, the number and type, right, nice. Deciding where to buy a house, change jobs, retire or keep working, that's a big one. Career pass, oh see, so you can see that this would be a good brainstorming thing for students. It could be on any particular topic. A lot of people deciding about retiring or not, buying a car. And then you can see where there are duplicates, just like in the other frame. Okay, I think somebody's working on number 10. Um, anybody want to do number seven just to have another one up there? Feel free to do another one. <clears throat> and these were all yellow, you notice, but then somebody changed theirs to pink. You know, they can change the color. Um, very good. See, ooh, somebody changed the background color. So that's the, that's the issue with having everyone edit. We can all make it beautiful together. Okay, how was that one? Thumbs up, thumbs down, not bad? It was good, I liked it. <laughs> oh, good, thumbs thank up. you. Thumbs up. <laughs> thank you for speaking up. Yeah, anybody can speak up because I'm not really checking the chat so much. All right, so let's move on to number three. Excuse me, how did you make all those little squares all over the board there? Oh, so I just put the sticky notes in ahead of time. I'm oh, sorry, the sticky notes. I just put them in ahead of time and I numbered them. Oh, okay. And I'm gonna show you how to do that later. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a way to have it ready to go. Um, <clears throat> Some classes you might assign the number to students. So, you know, so and so is number one, number two, number three, and then uh, they know exactly what number to go to if you don't want them just picking one. Oh, Cindy, Jan is asking how do we change the background color? Okay, up at the top, um, underneath the title, Untitled Jam, there's Set Background. And we're going to look that, at that in a little bit. And the default is just white, but then you can have dots, you know, line, little graph paper, darker graph paper, and then the blue, like somebody did, and then there's black. 
or we can upload a picture and we'll be doing that in a little bit. I'll show you that. Um, so it's very easy to change the background. I don't necessarily show my students how to do that, <laughs> but um, you know, maybe you might have your students make their own gen board. And, and while we're up talking about that, next to set background, you see where it says clear frame. So if I click that right now, I'm losing everything. So rather than panic, we're gonna just undo and then it all comes back. So uh, that's a good thing to teach your students also in case somebody clears the frame by mistake. I don't usually show, you know, when I use this with beginners, I never even showed them that because I didn't want them to know about it. And uh, we just focused on the slide itself. Okay, should we go on to one more? Here we go. So if we go to slide three, um, here's a template that I've downloaded from the internet, a free template, a nice fancy little one here. And I changed the question. That's the one editing part you could do before I uploaded it as a background image. And so for this one, um, let's try using the sticky notes again, but this time um, put your name and then put it under the yes or the no. Do you wake up before seven? Um, so go ahead and do that and add your name. And then you've got to find yours and move it. You notice they, they land on top of each other. So then you've got to find your own and move it. So a lot of people get up before seven. That's the teacher's life. I used to, and then I retired. So. <laughs> Now I get up at 7.15, I think. Okay, great. So this is one way where uh, by having the students' names out there, now you can move on to, you know, more conversation like, oh, so uh, Mary, what time do you wake up? If you wake up before seven, what time do you wake up? Is Mary there? Can you... Put on your mic and tell us when you get up, when you wake up. Uh, I get up at 6.30-ish. Okay, great. And then you could have the conversation going, well, does anyone else get up at 6.30? Maybe Nancy does. Maybe Janet does. You can find out who gets up the earliest. Debbie, what time do you get up? What time do you wake up? 4.30. 4.30. Ooh, does anybody wake up before 4.30? Thankfully not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Debbie wins. Okay. Oh, Pamela, 4 a.m. Okay. <laughs> All right. So very good. And, and uh, I like Pamela's idea. She put the exact time so you could have your students, you know, go back into their um, little sticky note and change the time, you know, or add the time, I should say. So it could be more exacting. Then you can you can line up all the names in order and who gets up the earliest, who gets up the latest. How many people all, uh, all get up at 6.30? Or, you know, you can, it leads to a lot of conversation. All we right. We have several questions. Okay, uh, Professor, great. Professor Derbert Rogian, sorry if I mispronounced your name, is asking, could you please show where to find free Jamboard templates? Okay, I will show that. Uh, it's on the agenda in a little mm -hmm. bit. Oh, okay, and another question, how do you duplicate the frame? 
Oh, that's a great question. We can do that right now. So up above where it says three over four right now, if I click the down arrow, I'm, I can see all the frames from our particular um, Jamboard that we're working on. So um, above on the right side, there are three little dots. So if I click on the three little dots, my choices are delete that frame or duplicate it. So if I duplicate it, now I see another one. Can you see that on your screen? Now we have two that have the blue background. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all you do. And um, so then you can do it again. So if you have groups of students, then you can either tell them, okay, group number one, you're going to work with slide or frame two and group you know two is going to work on slide three or you can actually you know put an indicator on the slide group one group two group three and then they find their correct slide and that's a good way if you have a larger group of students or you want them to work in a smaller group uh, so that's how you do it the three dots up to the right. And this is also um, a good way to look at your whole Jamboard together. And then you can also, in this area, then move slides around. So I click and drag it. And you can see that blue line of where I'm dragging a frame over, a slide over. And you can easily reorder your slides as needed frames and then you click the up arrow to close that down again okay so very good you can see the copies here oh on the last one on um, frame six now if everybody would like to grab one of the pens and just try writing something change the color if you like i just want you to experience it's not so easy to do that to write something on the board, but go ahead and try it. I'll give you some lined paper, see if that helps. <laughs> Just, yeah, try and experiment something. You can draw a picture, you can put a name. And you can see where we could be on top of each other also, but. Hi, um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I clicked on a pen in the color and nothing happened with my cursor. Okay, is the pen a symbol highlighted on the left? Yeah, it's highlighted with red. Okay, we'll change the color. Okay, I'll change it to green. Okay. Well, it's not, oh, now it's green, yeah. And then do I drag the pen over? Just go to somewhere in the frame and start moving it. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not doing anything. I don't mm. know why. It must be locked or something. I don't know. Huh. Can you see where your mouse is at all? Yeah, I can, well, I can see my uh, cursor. Yeah. Do you see a green dot when you're in a frame? Even um, before I, you yeah, I, I see a green dot, but the green dot is just sitting there. Okay. That's probably me. Oh, okay. that's you, yeah. Okay, so I moved mine away. Now, can you see your green dot when you're in the frame? Um, there's nothing, yeah. Yeah, there must be something that's locked on my on my screen because I wasn't able to um, do the the activity right before this either. Mm -hmm. I couldn't um, I couldn't write mm -hmm. my name in a, you know, in, in a block there. Okay, all right. Well, you'll have to try it later. See if it works. Okay, and uh, yeah, math would be good for um, using the pen. Are there any other questions? Was, was everybody pretty successful besides um, the not finding, oh, there's a face in there, the not finding 
your mouse and the frame. Hopefully, it looks like we have a nice little collage going on. Okay, so I'm going to close this up because I want to show you some other jams and model more of um, how you would create some of these jam jam boards to use with your students. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Thank you for participating. All right, now, can you guys see this? What is your favorite month? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, when I was in this one, the previous one, let's see. Uh, yeah, this one. Okay, you notice that what city would you like to visit? If I click in there, there's a text box and there's also a shape. And I could easily, you know, delete that and then it's gone and I, I can bring it back. But I just want to show you the difference. Now in this one, when I click, I cannot get to the text or the shape. And that's because I've, I've made this as a background image. And that is one of the great things about Jamboard now is you can create your background the way you want it, where students couldn't mess with it or move it. And so it's set. And then you could use it again. Uh, so for example, um, say I use a text box this time. Let's select that. <clears throat> okay, maybe my favorite month is April. Okay. And, and then somebody else put in um, Monday. Okay, and it's like, oh, well they, well, they didn't really answer the question. Uh, and, and maybe we get a lot of responses. I've worked with, uh, you know, maybe one group in a breakout room and now I want to work with a different group but I don't want to have these responses there. I can clear the frame but it's not going to clear the background. So in other words you can reuse this several times with different students. Some teachers they want to ask for volunteers to post things or specifically ask for different students and maybe you want to have you know 10 responses at a time and then clear the frame and use it again. So I'll be showing you how to do that in a little bit. Another idea, like I said before, is um, putting a text box inside of a shape and then having the sticky notes ready to go for the students. Now, one thing that is really helpful if you're making a whole bunch of these together on one frame is if you click on it and you do a control D, it will keep multiplying it for you. So you don't have to keep copying and pasting. In Jamboard, like if I right click, I can duplicate it or you can click the three dots and duplicate. So you could do that, but just to save, it's very easy to do a control D. If you're on um, a Mac, I guess that would be command D. So you can make multiples at a time. Um, and so that's a little time saver there. Okay, so I wanted to show you how to make questions. So if you wanna make a question and put it in a text box, um, what are you doing tonight? Okay, after class. All right, so I have my text box that I'm gonna ask my students. And then I want to put a shape. I like to use this one. 
but now you notice the shape is on top. So I don't, I don't see where I, I want to have the text on top. So in the three dots, you can also order. So that's a good thing to know if they're not lined up right. So I'm sending this to the back or backwards. So now my text box is available. And uh, sometimes you're not sure, what am I selecting? Is it the text box or is it the shape? And you can, you can see it's a larger portion there for the shape, but also up at the top, you can see that it's talking about border color and it's talking about fill. So that's not the text box. If you're in the text box, it's going to give you the font and color and alignment. Okay, so, so I like to do that. It kind of looks nice. Now, if I wanted to, I'm just going to delete this. If I wanted to now make this where nobody could come in and mess with it, I'm going to go to the three dots up next to the share button. And I'm going to use the feature that's called save as save frame as image. So it's basically taking a picture of this frame. So now on my computer, if you can see on the left, it says teacher demo dot 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 PNG. So that is the picture. So I'm going to have to clear the frame as it is now. I'm going to set my background and I'm going to pick image. And I can either browse for it, but it's right here in the bottom left. So I'm just going to drop it in. And now it is the background. So now when I click, nothing will happen. So that's one great feature for um, Jamboard to have that available. Let's look at some other things. You could uh, upload a picture, an image, ask a question. Again, I've said it where the students can't mess with the picture, but they can add their sticky notes, whatever they'd like to add. Here's another example, some vocabulary practice. The background is set with the picture and um, the direction of what they're supposed to do. Uh, also with pictures, you could have your students identify the room, items, whatever vocabulary you're working on. It could be the kitchen or the bathroom if you're doing rooms in the house or other things. Maybe you're labeling food or, you know, job titles, whatever unit you're working on. That would be a good thing to do. This is a good one to duplicate the frame so that you know, a lot of groups could be working uh, together, smaller groups, I mean, working together to finish their frame. So uh, let's do a background image for practice. So I can show you that. So I'm going to look for the image button. I can do a, an image search, but I do have some in my Google Drive that I wanted to use. One thing that I like to do is use um, Pixabay images because they're free to use. So maybe I pick this picture. I can insert it. And I could then enlarge it. You can go to the top and then get it as big as you can. Now you notice the, I could only go so large. <clears throat> But if I wanted to make this the background, that would make it uh, larger and complete the frame. And also when you add an image, see anybody could, could mess with it. So I'm gonna delete that. Now I'm gonna set my background with that same image. Let's browse for it in Google Drive. Go through the same thing. Uh, 
Okay, set as frame background. Oh, it didn't make it any larger. Hmm, I thought it might. Okay, but at least nobody can mess with it. So it's, this is the background. You could put a question, you know, on the left maybe. And um, you can drag your text boxes over, change the alignment, change the font size if you wanted to. It's kind of large, but I could always adjust my box size as well. Okay, and then you can have your students add their sticky notes or their comments. All right, let's move on. Uh, another thing you might wanna do is add something like a table. You can do that from Google Slides. And maybe they've had interviews and you want them to um, listen for the information and write um, responses and put them in the correct boxes. Maybe you interview people together and then have different students and information for the different people. That's one thing you can do. Uh, you can make a little map and add pictures. This one, I made these bottom two pictures part of the background, but then these I've stacked up. So maybe your students are listening and maybe we're working on prepositions of place. Oh, the, the hospital is across the street. It's across from Mount Avenue it's across from the park and they move the item. Oh, let's see, the bank is between the library and the park. So they find the, the bank, we don't have a bank. Oh, the restaurant is between, okay. So you get the idea. So you can have a listening activity where they're moving things around. You could be talking, one of the students could be doing this. Uh, they could be telling each other, uh, lots of things you can do, but you could just Find some pictures ahead of time if you didn't want your students to spend the time to find the pictures, although they could, but you could have them stacked up and ready to go. Um, this, uh, my class, we did this in a Google Doc and then I took a picture of it and that now that's the background here. So something you can do with this in a chart, a fun thing to do is to then use one of the pens and um, ask some comprehension questions like, oh, okay, I have Mei Lu and Lenny and Carmen and Chun. How long has Chun lived in San Diego? And then they can look and somebody answers. Oh, okay, and they say five years. So then you can cross it off. Okay, we've done that one. How many siblings does May Lu have? Oh, one sister. Okay, and then you, you cross it off. And different people are answering. And then you can clear it and then have other people answer it or have other people ask the questions. You can reuse the activity again and again when you set the background so that uh, it can be reused by clearing the frame. I really like that option with Jamboard. Another thing you could do with the pen is, you know, type some text or get some text in from uh, a Google slide and then have them work with the text directly. Okay, who can circle? Chun's last name. Okay, and somebody gets the pen and they they circle or they underline. How long has she lived in San Diego? Five years. Or it could be a reading activity. 
where you could use your laser and and if it's a low level class, Chun Mei has four siblings, so they can kind of follow along with you. A lot of options for that. Working with the text, if you have a higher level class, of course you have more dense text, but you know, you could look for adjectives or whatever you're working on in your class. Um, you can also have them add pictures for vocabulary building or review, uh, and they just add it, kind of like a little mind map thing. Another thing you could do is, uh, which I always think is a good thing, is maybe some puzzle time. Here's a word search. I created a puzzle maker. You can copy the puzzle and then make it the background of a slide. And oh, sorry, Cindy. Yeah. Uh, Janet is asking if uh, you can please show how to add a table. Sure. OK, so let's go to um, a slide. I can do slide.new. That's another shortcut to get to Google Slides. And uh, I'm going to insert a table. Insert table. Okay, so maybe one four by four. Okay, for example. And then I'm going to move the edges to the four corners so that it's going to take up the entire screen. And you can put your text boxes in now if you like. Okay, so like the one I use, I'm going to type name. And, you know, you can make it bigger, smaller, however you want, the size. Align it the way you like. Then I, I can duplicate the, the box with that control D and just move them over. Maybe this is my header. Okay. All right, and you, you know, and then change them as needed, but I'll just leave it there for now. And then in uh, Google Slides, then the frame is highlighted because you could have several slides, but this one is highlighted on the left there. I'll go to File, Download, and you want to pick either a JPEG or a PNG. I'll just pick PNG. So again, that's File. And that's in the notes on the PowerPoint. Download is a PNG. OK, and now on the bottom left, you see it's come up again. It says Untitled Presentation. That's a picture of this. So I'll go back to my Jamboard. Let's see if I have any open slides. And also, Cindy, I apologize, okay, yes. but we have um, three minutes for Oh, OK. The Thank end. you. The time is going fast. OK, so here I am. And now I'm going to set my background. I'm going to pick image. Oh, sorry. I'm going to pick image, but I'm going to do the upload. So I'm going to drag it again since it's right there. And there it is. So now it's, it's the background. Does that make sense and answer your question? Yes, Elisa has some up. OK. OK, very good. Well, let's go back. And I, only, I know I only have a few minutes. But again, here's one where it's uh, from um, a free website where you could get different things. Uh, here's an example of some 
that are pre-made and you just change the ex exit ticket. What's one thing you learned today? And the students pick a number just like you guys did. Here's one where uh, I had made where students could add their first names according to the frame. And then oh, the sorry, Debbie, uh, Debbie is, Yes. Debbie is asking where to find template templates. Oh, okay. Let me go back to the PowerPoint. And can you see the PowerPoint? No. You need okay, to stop let me do sharing. a reshare. All right, can you see it now? Yes. Okay, so in the PowerPoint, uh, there are a few slides about and links to some um, free templates. And you can just search on Google also. You just type in free templates. Canva, you can also get some templates from Canva if you are uh, signed up with Canva and have an account. But these are some recommendations. So for example, if I clicked on this, Uh, it's going to ask me to copy it. So I copy it and that would go right into my Google Drive account. So they're all free to copy. Some of them are on a website and you copy from there. Uh, but some of them are just direct copies. Um, does that answer your question? These are just some ideas of ones that I found that were helpful. This Mrs. Park at the bottom, she had some really colorful ones and some have animation and they're a little bit fancier. So it's the PowerPoint in the chat and we need to finish soon because it's 346 and I yes. instructed to finish. Yes. Um, so well, I put this in the chat before, but let me do it again. It's, if it's not working, let me try it. Okay, here it is again. So this is the document I'm showing right now with all the links to the PowerPoint and the jams. Okay, I am sorry. And thank you, okay. Cindy, for your presentation. Beautiful thank presentation. Thank you, Ina. Thank you, everyone, for coming.